Hi guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm going to finally do a bit of DIY, something that I've been trying to do for the last couple of weeks but haven't been able to because the weather has been so rubbish. In today's video I'm going to show you guys how I'm painting my composite front door. Now some of you guys might have found this video because you've been doing what I've been doing and looking for ways to paint a composite front door and from what I've found it looks like you can do it and it's relatively easy enough if you use the right materials and you do enough preparation. Our front door is a composite front door which has a UPVC kind of skin with a kind of textured frontage, a solid core and then the same again on the reciprocating side. Our front of the door is red. Now there's nothing wrong with red doors but it's just not really to our liking. So we decided that if we can't afford to get a new door and we don't want to sacrifice the heat loss by reinstating the original front door just yet, like I said in my previous house tour video, then we need to update and spruce up the front. So here we are today and I'm going to paint our front door. So I'm going to go through the materials that I've got for this. Uh, like I said, there's a little bit of prep that needs to be involved. Good preparation for UPVC is probably going to be key here. So it's a composite skin, so it's a UPVC, it's not wood. So it's a composite material. So prepping and giving it a good foundation is going to be key for the top coat to bind onto. So I've got some materials here that I'm going to be showing you through. So the materials that I've got to repaint a UPVC or a composite front door, but in my case a composite, is some sugar soap to give a good degreasing clean of the door. Again, you can use like a homemade cleaner for the front door, it doesn't need to be sugar soap. Uh, I was just in Wix and picked it up. So sugar soap, clean the door, some frog tape or masking tape to mask up if you've got glass or anything sensitive on there, like your accessories that are on the door. Preferably take all the accessories off. So like door knockers and doorknobs and all of those sort of things, anything that is easily to remove, take them off. If you can't take them off, frog tape them. This stuff is kind of like waterproof, it stops seeping through, makes life a lot easier. I've then got a sanding block and sandpaper. I'm going to use fine grits just because I want to give it a nice little key but not rub the surface too too much. And then I'm going to use an undercoat primer. So just an all surface primer and undercoat. Doesn't need to be run seal, could be anything really. The reason why I've done this is because it's specific for UPVC. So the reason why I'm going to use an all surface primer and undercoat as opposed to just painting straight on top of the red paint is because it is red and it's quite bold and it's a plastic. Now using this all surface primer and undercoat, even if it's just one coat that I'm going to be using on the door, it's quick dry so I can start putting my top coat on within two hours. It's made specifically for metals and UPVC and plastic. Brilliant. I can use use that on, on the door straight away and it kills some of the reds that, from the original door which will mean when I apply the top coat things will be a lot easier. Now the top coat is where things get a little bit interesting. The colour choice is a nice colour but it is a bit of a compromise on my part. When I was doing my research, I read a lot of good reviews about French chic paint for painting UPVC and composite doors. This stuff apparently is the business when it comes to a good, good finish and a good strong coat of paint. Now we have gone for Dusky Blush. All I can say, gentlemen, if you're watching this video is happy wife, happy life. So the colour is going to be a little bit out there, but I'm quite comfortable with it. It doesn't bother me at all. I think it's going to be quite cool having a like a dusky pink on the outside of the house as opposed to this deep, deep red at present. We're going to get started now pretty much. I've already started a little bit of prep before I started filming this segment. I've taken off the accessories on the door and I've put taping up already. So we're in a position to start sanding and start painting. So let's go. So like I was saying, before I started sanding the door, I prepped everything up. So I've removed the door handle, the letter box and the door knocker. Mine were all secured by screws and it was all simple enough. I'm sure your doors will be similar. What I'm doing now is sanding all of the panels of the door, all of the faces as evenly as possible using a 120 grit sandpaper. What I would recommend you guys doing is looking for a non-clog sandpaper as the sandpaper that I had wasn't anti-clog. And basically within a couple of minutes, each pad was kind of like done, uh, fully cogged up and wouldn't sand anymore. So not very good. The aim of what I'm doing here is to get an even key across the whole of the door before I start giving it its undercoat. This is to make adhesion of paint so much easier and to make your finish a whole lot better. 
once you give them the doors a good sand, it's all nice and even, you need to clean down the doors. Now, I didn't clean down the doors before I started sanding because I thought it was kind of pointless. You could do that if you want to, but really, you just want to give it a good clean all the way over, get rid of all of the residue from the sanding and also all of the crud that generates over time to give yourself a nice clean surface to work on when you start to paint. What you want to do is go over it maybe twice, give it a good clean, and then you want to ultimately clean all of the suds down so there's no sugar soap residue or whatever cleaner you're using on the door which may affect the finish of the paint. Make sure it's all cleaned off and make sure it's all dry before you start painting. Once your door is nice and clean and well sanded, you can start putting an undercoat on if you so wish, or you can go straight on with your top coat, whatever you feel best. Now, I've chosen to use an undercoat because the door I'm painting is red, so it's quite a bold color. And I also want a perfect finish or as close to perfect finish as possible. The white coat gives a good adhesive coat for the top coats to be put onto. It's specifically designed for UPVC, which is fantastic. It makes my life a whole lot easier when it comes to putting the top coat on. It's also quick drying, so it doesn't add on too much time to my day. All I'm gonna do is give this one coat all over to make sure that it's fully covered. It doesn't need to be perfect, just even and clear. So there's no red showing through whatsoever. And then I leave that dry for two to three hours before I start putting the top coat on. Nothing too fancy, nothing too spectacular. So that is the door prepped and primed. So we've sanded the door down, cleaned it down twice with sugar soap and then washed it down with a lint-free cloth to get rid of the sugar soap residue. And then after that, we topped it up with an undercoat primer all the way over. So to completely wash out the red, get a decent coverage. We're not after a perfect white finish here because it is just an undercoat, just an even finish. It's not clumpy, looks semi-decent. And we just gotta let this dry for two hours now. The undercoat primer that I'm using is a Ronsil primer. I've never used this one before. I'm quite impressed with it, albeit it's quite watery. I didn't anticipate it being that watery, so it is a little bit messy. You're gonna definitely need a dust sheet if you're gonna use an undercoat primer. Again, I'm not sure of the consistency of the French Chic paint either. I'm, I'm gonna assume that it's quite watery as well, so make sure you've got dust sheets. Also on a separate note, make sure when you're sanding that you're wearing dust masks. I know that I didn't, but for safety reasons, you don't know what you're breathing in. I know I didn't do it, but I, I assessed that I was outside and there was a strong breeze away from me. I felt like I was okay. Make sure you guys are taking into consideration that what you're sanding could be harmful to you wear a suitable dust mask to make sure that you are okay before you start any of these works. Right, now we've got that out of the way, let's get back to painting. I'll see you when I'm painting the top coat. And like a dummy, I forgot to hit record as soon as I started painting the top coat. So I'm really, really sorry for that. The French Cheek paint is fantastic paint. It covers really, really well. It's dead easy to apply and it's not too watery. It's very quick drying, so you have to work quickly, but it covers really well. I gave two coats, so this is my second coat. So guys, I'm really sorry. I forgot to press record, or at least I thought I had pressed record when I was putting the first top coat on for the blush pink color. I, yeah, I realized after putting the top coat on, I'm waiting for it to dry or waiting for the first coat to dry. I went to check the camera and yeah, realized that it was off. So sorry, you didn't see it going on, but I think the color looks fantastic. We've left the paint overnight. It looks nice. Uh, there's no like blemishes that I can see. So it's had a coat of undercoat and then two coats of top coat. So in terms of the blush pink paint from French Chic, it's a really good paint. It dries rapidly. It says it's touch dry within an hour and then recoatable within two. I found it was touch dry within probably about half an hour, albeit it was quite a bright sunny day, quite warm. So that might have affected the drying times. I found it very good coverage of the paint. I barely used a quarter of a can, though I did spill some. So we're down to about half a can. So you get plenty of coverage from a small can. I can't remember the size, but on the website, which I will link below, has different size ranges. I, we went for the smallest one. It's more than adequate. It covers a front door very easily so very good work so this is me pretty much done now guys all i'm going to go through here is doing a little bit of touch-up work around the window seals and things like that where you have to be a little bit more detailed and iron out any little patches that i may have missed the day before i can also put all of the accessories back on the door again such as the letterbox the door knocker and the door handles 
and get the door operational again. I'm not gonna put another coat on. I'm really, really happy with the finish. Just a few touch up bits that I need to sort out before we are done. So essentially, this is it guys. This is how easy it is to paint a composite or UPVC front door. In my opinion, all you need to do is have good solid prep and a bit of confidence going into this and buy good materials. Use an undercoat primer. If you are not confident with the stability of your door, make sure that you use good sandpaper, give the door a good clean. And if I can recommend anything, the French Chic paint is terrific. I am very, very happy with the finish and the quality of the paint. It was very easy to work with. It wasn't really messy. The coverage is excellent. In terms of usage, half a tin, easily done this door. That was being generous. You certainly did, wouldn't need any more than half a tin. All in all, I reckon you could probably do this work for about 50 to 60 quid. If you've got some materials, it might already make it cheaper. Now we are coming right up to the end of this video now and you can see the door in its finished state right now. I'm really happy with it, I think it's great.